Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.10, and in this lesson, we're going to go over the parameters for the E clap creation. So, in the spirit of randomness from the last video, I thought we'd continue that here. And as you're going to find out, I actually am not 100% sure about all of the parameters for the E clap creation as of yet. We are going to have to generate some random numbers, and those random numbers are going to at least inform me of what I have to use for this particular creation. Now, you can either follow along and do exactly what I do, or you're going to be able to pause the video at certain points, generate some random numbers of your own, and those are going to help give you uh, some of your guidelines here for this creation project. So we're going to be both uh, limiting ourselves in terms of uh, additional effects, containers, modulators we can use, and we're also going to limit our time. So in the last creation project, I probably spent a good 30 or 40 hours making that particular track. This time I'm maybe limited to just one hour. So we're going to see how all of this shakes out right now. The available instruments, obviously, you're only allowed to use the E-clap. You can do whatever you want with the E-clap, but that is the one and only instrument you can use as your uh, default sound generator, if you will. Audio effects, we're going to find out which six effects we're going to be able to use. In addition, you will be allowed the tool and the peak limiter. So those are a guarantee. You can use those no matter what. We'll have access to one container, uh, excluding the replacer, because that you really need both audio, multiple instruments, etc. We'll have access to one modulator. Again, we'll determine that at random. And then we'll have our wild card, one additional device, which with this wild card, you have to use it. With the other uh, effects, containers, modulators, you don't have to use any of them, but for this one additional device, you do have to at least use it at some point in some way. And then with time, we're gonna find out if I'm gonna have one, two, three, or four hours, which if you get four hours, I'd encourage you to do two sessions of two hours, which we will determine at random. So let's determine what I'm gonna have access to first, and then we'll talk about why we're doing it this way and some potential strategies if, for example, you get hit with like one hour, how are you gonna go about creating something in such a short amount of time? So let's go ahead and get started. I've created a document here, and this document has all of our audio effects. So from one to 26, I've numbered those accordingly. We have our containers, one to six. They also go up 27 to 32 for when we generate our one wild card. And then I have my modulators here, 33, 34, 35, or one to three. So I'm gonna use this website here, random.org. I have from one to 26, and I'm just gonna go ahead and generate off uh, six of these, and those are gonna be the audio effects I have access to. Notice I've also added those third-party plugins. So if you don't have those um, and you're going through and generating things on your own, if you hit 24, 25, or 26, you can just obviously skip and, and you know send another one. But otherwise, there's no skipping. You have to use what you get. And I'm actually hoping I get stuff that I don't normally use. It's going to force me to figure out how I can use it in a creative way. So here we go. Let's generate our first result. Okay, 20. That's the ring mod. I'm going to go ahead and bold that. Let's generate another. 18. That's the resonator bank. Number three. 19. Reverb. Let's generate another one. Two. That's the blur. All right. Generate another one. That's nine. It's the dynamics. And that's one, two, three, four, five. We have to generate one more. Number 22, that is the transient control. Okay, so unfortunately I didn't get any kind of EQ, but that's all right, I'm gonna have to make it work. So we have the blur, the dynamics, the resonator bank, the reverb, the ring mod, and the transient controller. So that is what I'm gonna have access to in addition to the E-clap instrument. Let's go ahead now and figure out exactly which uh, container I'm going to use. So we can only use one of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in one to six. It's going to exclude number five. So if five comes up, I'll have to generate another one. I actually got five. So let me just double check. Yep, we have to do one more. Three. Okay, so that's the mid-side split. I really would have wished I got something different, but, you know, as is life. 
And now let's figure out what modulator we have access to. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a one to three, generate here. I got two. And so that is the LFO. And I'm actually a little disappointed I got the LFO because I wanted to get something different since I limited myself to the LFO before. But don't worry, there's going to be plenty of additional uh, challenges we'll be doing along the road. So uh, chances are I'll hit some different things in this section. All right, so let's determine our one additional device. So I'm going to put in 1 to 35 here. And here we go. Let's generate this out. The suspense is killing me. 15. I might have already had 15. Nope, it's the frequency shifter. So I'm going to bold that. And I'm also going to italicize it and star it up so I remember that this is what I am going to have to use no matter what. All right, so I'm just going to save this so I don't forget. Now, if you guys are going through this, feel free to uh, pause the video when you're looking at the Word document and go to random.org and generate some for yourselves. All right, so the last thing we have to determine is how much time I'm going to have, one hour, two hours, three hours, or four hours. So to determine that, I'm just going to put in one to four, and I'm going to generate this up and see what we get. I got two, okay? So right in the middle there. Now it's up to you. You can either follow along with what I've done here or you can generate your own numbers out to figure out what you're going to have access to. And now the big questions that I think a lot of people would ask are, why do this? Why limit yourself in such a way? Why leave it up to pure chance? And the reason is because any artist should be able to make something interesting with anything okay i don't sh i shouldn't feel like i need to have access to every single effect or i need to have access to every single modulator or container or if you're a painter you shouldn't need to have access to every single color right you need to learn how to mix and how to really come up with some unique colors that are all to yourself that nobody else is going to have access to and of course that's what's going to happen when you start mixing colors together because nobody is going to be able to combine them the exact same way you do and that's kind of the idea behind this. Also, this is a great way to force yourself to have to make something. If you know you have two hours on the clock, and what I'd recommend doing is actually getting a, a stopwatch or a timer or something on the computer that's counting down from two hours. Of course, you can pause if you have to go to the bathroom, those sorts of things. But after that two hours is up, that's what you have to put out there. If it's blank, if you have nothing... All right, that means that you were unable to complete it in the time. And what do you have to do? You have to close, you have to open it up, set the two hours again. Now, I'm not going to allow myself to have multiple tries just because for the sake of the type of person I am, I'm not going to allow that. But if you want to, you are more than welcome to try multiple times. Like, you know, try it three different times on three different days and then pick your favorite. That sort of thing is totally cool. The emphasis here is on making something start to finish and understanding that you can't go back and keep tweaking it. When that time is up, time is up and you have to move on. Uh, it's incredibly helpful to do this for your own art. And uh, it's nice to take that break from, you know, what I just did with the last example. And I worked for 25, 30, 40 hours on something. And now I'm going to be working two hours. And chances are I might enjoy what I make in two hours more than what I did in that 40 hours. That's kind of the brilliance of all of this. And hopefully some of you guys have that exact same experience or, you know, just really appreciate the fact that you have to work under pressure. And that's another part of this is working under pressure. I'm sure a lot of you have been in situations before, maybe in school, where you've put off a paper till the very last minute, it's like the night before, and because you have all that extra stress and all that extra pressure, you come up with something really, really good. Uh, shame on me, I have done that before, but usually it ended up working out quite well. If I started that paper months in advance and, you know, kind of slowly worked my way through it, I usually wasn't all that happy with the paper at the end for some reason. Uh, so this is another one of those things. You can see how you work under pressure. And a lot of times, if you know you have that deadline, you come up with something. Whereas when you don't have a deadline, you constantly go in and tweak. You never know when to say, I'm done, when to finish. So that's really the reason behind this. If, for example, you get one hour or two hours like I did here, I would recommend spending a lot of time before going in and opening up the software. 
kind of have an idea of where you're going to go know the first few steps you're going to take. After you take those first few steps, you can, of course, start to experiment, get creative, but always have an eye on the clock. It's especially true if you have one hour. You kind of have to plan that hour out before you even go in there and get to work. Happy accidents and things that were unintended will still occur within that hour, but you need to have a set plan. And anytime you go in and work in the DAW, unless you're just kind of screwing around and experimenting, if you're in composition mode, you need to have a plan. You need to be focused. This time constraint is going to focus you. So this should help some of you who've always struggled making things in the past. Don't worry about what comes out the other end. Just as long as something comes out the other end, that's what this is all about. So I look forward to seeing if any of you guys take on the challenge and hearing what you're able to come up with. So in the next video, we'll take a look at what I was able to get. And uh, hopefully it's not just silence. All right. Thanks a lot. And you'll hear from me again then. Take care.